হরি দিন তো গেল সন্ধ্যা হল পার করো আমারে দ্য সং রেফার্স টু সাম ওয়ান ওয়েটিং এট দ্য ক্রসিং অফ দ্য রিভার অ্যাট দি এন্ড অফ দ্য ডে টু বি এসকটেড টু দি আদার সাইড মেটাফরিক্যালি ইভোকিং দ্য ক্রসিং ওভার ফ্রম লাইফ টু ডেথ ইন্দির ঠাকুর আন অপু অ্যান্ড দুর্গাজ আন্ট ফ্রম পথের পাঁচালি সিংস দ্য সং সিটিং এট দি অ্যান্সেস্ট্রাল হোম অফ নিশ্চিন্দিপুর দিস কনস্ট্যান্ট ওভার ল্যাপ অফ লাইফ অ্যান্ড ডেথ moments of beauty breaking into sheer brutality is perhaps the basic theme of opu trilogy arguably the most celebrated films in the history of indian cinema no wonder the heart wrenching tune of pothet pachali the first film of the trilogy that is played on a bamboo flute is derived from this song the beauty of life leading to death and new reasons to live evolving from the ashes marks the journey of opu Satyajit Ray was a master of painting death scenes on screen and today we are here to discuss how the five death scenes from Upu trilogy are astounding creations in context of world cinema and how they elevate the beauty of the trilogy helping us understand and celebrate life all the more before moving on once again requesting for your support through likes shares and subscriptions we need your support to go on Indir Thakuran, played by the fabulous Chuni Bala Devi at an age of 80 plus, is one of the most iconic characters of Indian cinema. Her death comes across as the first of the five deaths of the trilogy. But before going to that scene, let's look at how Ray builds up that sequence of pathos. Across the length of her role in Pothir Pachali, we watch Chuni Bala Devi moving from one place to another in search of shelter, food and some minimum dignity she is always seen carrying her bare minimum belongings her torn apart mat her walking stick a small bundle of this and that and her metal water pot ghoti as we say in bangla these are her properties only things she owns for all unlike food shelter and clothing that she has to beg from others her state of living in the roy household is a bit a sweet affair facing the constant banters of Shorbhojaya and the love and warmth of the little Durga. Just after being admonished for her habits and irresponsiveness by Shorbhojaya that clearly hurts Indira Thakuran's residual self-respect, we see her huge toothless grin as Durga brings her a stolen guava from the neighboring gardens. She wishes for a better shawl, rather needs it to face the acute cold of rural Bengal. And after months of begging from whoever possible she gets one from a distant relative she is happy excited to receive this basic necessity but this happiness is short lived as we always face across the trilogy she is driven out of the household by shorbhojaya for begging to this distant relative this typical bengaliness of satyajit's characters who can afford pain or poverty but are unable to compromise on self respect evolves from his first film and even in that sheer pain they do not shy away from love and care later we witness shorbhojaya driving out indir thakuran again indir bishima leaves with her treasures the stick the mat the pot draped in her shawl the film now cuts across to upu and durga their first sight of the running train piercing the rural landscape something the two kids always wanted to witness they are on a high and while they are returning home we have this first death scene 
look at Oppu. His first encounter with death in life. He is shocked. He is yet to understand clearly what death means. This death for him is not so different from the visuals of the train. Both first encounters and learnings, only residing on opposite ends of the emotional spectrum. Even for Durga, who approached her aunt in playfulness, is in shock while the same metaphorical song starts playing again in the background. The pot that Indir Thakuran carried all around rolls over to the nearby pond, visually underlining the death. The utensil, which was so precious until now, loses all its value and attachment in a moment imitating life itself. And then, the shawl which caused equal pain and pleasure for the old soul is seen on her body on the way to be burnt into ashes. All that matters in our lives, losing value in minutes. These recurring themes of something beautiful breaking into brutal realities is perhaps best expressed in Durga's death and the sequence is building up to it. Monsoon reaches Opu's village. The enchanting nature with its rhythmic drizzle on the floating lotus leaves gradually leads into heavy shower and then into a ruthless storm. Durga dances in the rain before seeking shelter under the tree from the same rain with Opu by her side. She falls sick pleasure converging into pain once again as we see her lying indifferent to the calls of the candy man whose sweets she was so fond of. The scene suggests how life is slowly depleting out of her frail body. But Durga is the symbol of energy, liveliness and dreams of the story. She can't lose the battle so easy. So across the fateful night of thunderstorms, we see multiple metaphors of the tug of war between life and death. The door that resists the continuous blows from the wind until it gives in. The thin curtain that struggles against the fierce gusts of rain. Or the light that keeps fighting the wind to not blow off for all. The fight gets over by the morning. We find how the storm has ramshackled the household and we realize what lies beyond the surface level collapse. The audience look at the lifeless figure of Durga, together with Opu, who is unsure of what has happened, wonders if his sister is still sleeping. However, he realizes soon enough, a realization that marks the end of his carefree childhood. Acceptance of destiny as we watch him get ready for school alone with his sister no more and his mother lost in her grief. Later, near the end of Pothir Pachali, we watch Opu finding the beads necklace that Durga had stolen from a wealthy cousin. Again, something that mattered so much to her when alive, something that caused humiliation and pain to Durga and Shorbojaya, which has now no value left, much like Indir Thakuran's spot. Opu throws it to the pond. His suddenly matured self does not want anyone to find out that her sister had actually stolen the beads. The pond that depicted the beauty of nature few scenes back engulfs Durga's precious treasure, bringing out ferocity of life this time. Oporajito, the second chapter of the trilogy, starts in a train journey, with the camera capturing Varanasi from the inside of the train, as if Opu is looking outside the window. The train and the location of Varanasi are both motives that add on to the journey of life that we have been discussing so far. The train has always represented Opu's journey, his initial amazement watching it from a distance as he was young. Riding the train from the city to his village across Oporajito as a mode of communication as he is growing up and settling by the lines as in settling in life in Opu Shongshar and Varanasi by the Ganges might be that river crossing point that Indir Thakuran used to sing about. A unique place highlighted in the Hindu mythology where pilgrims flock across ages to mark the start and closure of life as the initial few frames of Aparajito show. We also see the birds, the pigeons moving around in groups congregating in a peaceful settled way 
as the camera now moves into Horihor. Opu's father, who has also somewhat settled down with his family in Varanasi after Durga's tragic death. The film spends time in establishing the rhythm that is coming back into the family over the next few sequences until calamity strikes back on them. Horihor falls sick, gets bedridden and passes away having the last few drops of Ganga water that he cherished to have. The camera snaps away from the visuals of Horihor and the family as if shaking the audience to the pigeons again who are now all unsettled, flying in all directions while a piercing background score plays. Once the shock is over or when you are re-watching Aparajito, you realize that the pigeons were captured in the initial frames to mark this death later in the film. To comment on the highs and lows of our lives using contrasting visuals from the nature. Pigeons flocking together at dawn and flying away at evening. Hori din to galo, shundha holo keeps coming back. Even when we see Opu being dressed for the final rites of his father, we watch the shock and disbelief on his face more than the grief. We still do not see him crying as we move over from the third death he witnesses in his life. He continues to face new challenges in life with his mother always supporting him until she leaves him at the close of Oporajito. After his father's death, Sharvojaya was the world to Opu, his shelter, support and accomplice until he gets exposed to the world outside his village through his education, imagination and hunger for knowledge. Things which mattered so much to Opu before start losing value in the course of time, like everything else in this journey of life. His world surrounding his mother gets replaced by an outside inviting world persuading him to step out. But she having lost everything else tries to cling on to Opu as much as possible, which at time frustrates him. Opu, in his quest for knowing new, unintentionally ends up ignoring his mother, like so many of us do in life. His mother withers away in loneliness and finally succumbs. We never see Shorbojaya's death on screen. We just feel the emptiness when the character who was holding the story together until now is no more. When Opu returns home, hearing about his mother's illness, we see him feeling the same vacuum. Opu runs around the household, calling out for his mother. Ma? Ma? He runs Ma? from wall to wall in vain, and we realize how suddenly the world has gone empty for him. Satyajit's presentation of Shorbojaya's death in Oporajito portrays the vacuum a death of a close person creates in our life. It portrays what a mother means, someone who would always answer your calls, attend to your needs and respond to your demands, as Shorbojaya did for Opu. And now that she is gone, Opu's shouts for his mother only echo in the vacant household. We finally watch Opu cry. With a handful of scenes that Opu and Aparna share in Opur Shongshar, Satyajit creates images of immortal screen romance. The tender, innocent romance makes the audience so emotional, feels so relatable that when Aparna dies, we too sink in pain. Beauty, followed by brutality, returns in Opu's life. Opu gets a letter from Aparna that fills up his poverty-stricken mundane life. Look at him finding shelter in Aparna's words within the pressure and pain of making ends meet as portrayed through this scene in the bus. Aparna is his newfound shade from the ferocities of the world. The warmth of Aparna's love coming out of this letter makes Opu shine as we see him walking towards his one-room home by the train lines. He is so happy, 
it is hard to contain as we see him play with the baby on his way back and then as always in his life the calamity strikes out of nowhere the punch that opu puts on his brother in law having realized opurna is no more is his futile punch back to destiny that keeps on trying him at every juncture in life he is no more okay to take another blow and this time he lets go of all rationality responsibility and logical sense he is no more okay to build a new castle to let his fate destroy it again opu recedes away from normal life losing himself to the unknown and unplanned things that matter in life losing value in death has been a key motive in the trilogy and when opu throws away the manuscripts which was so dear to him we understand that the loss of opurna is no lesser than his own death there's no dialogue in the film for quite some time after opurna's death as if there's nothing more left to talk about opu's journey until we kind of go back to where it all started we see opu's son the little kajol playing in the gardens much like we saw opu and durga in the first film the journey gets back to the place it started the new life that came into the world brings back life in opu as we watch the final frames of opu shongshar where opu gets into a new journey with a new companion the choice of the riverside as the location for this final scene is intentional loaded philosophically conveying the endless ebb and flow of life which must go on despite obstacles This new journey which fades out of our sight as the trilogy ends will be similarly punctuated by pleasure and pain life and death beauty and brutality as we had across the three films as we have in our own lives and thus Opu trilogy through its five deaths stands out to be a mirror of our own existence a celebration of our living that is all from us today Hope you enjoyed this video and liked our analysis. Please share your comments and please share our content and subscribe to our channel to motivate us and bring you more videos like this one. Thank you for watching.